Salutations, respective viewers. I am George from Ireland. Here I am in Bel Belgravia, in this very plush part of London. And behind me is the house where Alfred Lord Tennyson lived um, the latter part of his life. So, Lord Tennyson was born in 1809 into an upper middle class family. He went to a private school, not one of the renowned public schools at the time. And then he went up to Trinity College, Cambridge, which was and is perhaps the most distinguished college in Cambridge University. You should see its enormous um, uh, square, like a quadrangle, as you'd say, in other places. So it dates back to the Middle Ages. Um, and he became a firm friend of um, uh, Arthur Henry Hallam, an old Etonian who was his contemporary. But uh, Alfred Tennyson was distraught when his friend Hallam uh, died at the age of only 21. And so that's because, because his friend expired so young, um, Tennyson composed um, In Memoriam, which was his elegy to his dear friend. Uh, you can see a, a portrait of um, Hallam at Eton because there were some levers, some of the um, most uh, celebrated schoolboys, those who thought they were going to go far in life, they had their portraits painted, were asked to donate them to the school, and Hallam's indeed is there. So, um, uh, what next uh, ooh, about Tennyson? So he really made his name as a poet and was a, soon uh, independently wealthy, one of, the most, one of the most renowned in the country. So as well as um, In Memoriam, he's known for um, the Mort d'Arthur, as in the death of Arthur. In the mid-19th century, there was this um, cult of King Arthur and medievalism and uh, chivalry, looking back to this idyll as though it was a nobler age. It's often those reactionaries and uh, romantic right-wingers who disliked the rise of the bourgeoisie who disliked industrialism, dark satanic mills and all that, um, they tended to hark back to the Middle Ages. But their uh, medieval atavism was largely nonsense. Their neo-feudalism was uh, really a lame excuse for trying to exploit the poor. Disraeli tried to jump on that bandwagon. Okay, although I alluded to Blake, Blake, who's a bit earlier, of course, um, was completely out of sympathy with it with neo-medievalism. Um, so, and he, did, he didn't think that the Middle Ages, when the baronial class lorded over the people who were held in serfdom, that semi-servitude, he didn't think that was anything to aspire to. Um, so uh, these were values of gallantry and solidarity that, uh, that um, Tennyson was, was lording. Anyway, in 1853, the Crimean War erupted. I shan't say more about the causation thereof or the course of it, but there was the, the char charge of the Light Brigade. So on the Crimean Peninsula, the British Army was there and there was a garbled order. If you go to the National Army Museum, you'll actually see the handwritten order. Of course, it's b before um, Guillermo Marconi invented the radio, or Popov, if you're Russian, invented the radio. Um, and so uh, a dispatch rider was sent with an order from a senior officer to a junior officer there saying that it attack those Russian guns at the end of the valley. Guns obviously meaning artillery, not, not small arms. Uh, but which valley? So it was a garbled order that was misunderstood. He could have sent a dispatch rider back for, clar for clarification, but he decided to take a 50-50 on it and he attacked the wrong position. Riding down a valley with obviously enemy, enemy positions um, to the left, to the right, and indeed at the end of the valley. So um, the uh, light brigade, that's cavalry, they were shot at from three directions and this very heavily defended position they obviously didn't manage to storm it and most of their men and horses became casualties so Tennyson turned that into uh, into uh, well a poetic triumph the charge of the light brigade indeed it was a film in the 1930s half a league half a league half a league onward into the valley of death rode the 600 and all the rest of it there's not a reason why there's but to do and die someone had blundered um, and so on about the guns uh, volleying and thundering, horse and hero fell, but you know, the Russian and Cossack reeled from saber stroke. Anyway, they rode back up the valley, but not 600, because so many of them had been slain, and that was that noble 600. So they're, they're, they're famous deathless, though their um, uh, military efforts were unavailing. Anyway, the coalition won the war, but uh, no thanks um, to their order that was issued to the Light Brigade. It was an example of the most um, dunderheaded uh, leadership by some of the British officer corps. It was only after this that um, Sandhurst, the Royal Military Academy, was, was founded under um, the reforms of the army. Erskine was, sorry, Childers was, was a prime mover in this, not Erskine Childers, um, his uncle I think it was, and the Cardwell reforms. Uh, Lord Sandhurst helped set that place up um, near all the shops to train officers, briefly to be buying commissions and 
really um, social connections were everything, and you can imagine how that panned out. Yeah, there were some um, able officers who rose to the top, but of course there were some um, mutton-brained ones who got there for all the wrong reasons. Anyway, so back to Lord Tennyson. He was later made Poet Laureate, as in the official poet of the, uh, of the country. It's the most exalted position in um, British poetry. Uh, so many more things he wrote about Ulysses and uh, returning to some sort of classical Greek theme, themes. I'm sure, I, unfortunately, I can't quote them off the top of my head. Um, um, and uh, thinking how people shouldn't, shouldn't top themselves should be a little bit more optimistic. So that's Alfred Lord Tennyson, often just known as Lord Tennyson. So unusually, his surname Tennyson became his title. Rather than taking a title from a place, he was uh, ennobled. He was the first poet to be given an aristocratic title for his poesy. You might think Lord Byron. Lord Byron inherited that title, Lord Byron. He was not elevated to the peerage on the basis of his poesy. So here, here he is. This fine big house, have a look up at it, in it. and um, his family was honoured afterwards. His son was made Governor General of Australia. So that's enough about Alfred Lord Tennyson.